Uh, good afternoon. Yes, apologies. I'm I'm not Tim James. You may have been expecting to see him, but uh, I, I was expecting him to be here until 12 hours ago when I uh, when I found out it was me instead. But uh, hopefully, I'll be able to cover the same uh, cover the same issues. Uh, my, uh, my my standard answer uh, to any questions will be uh, please contact Tim James when he's uh, when he's back in the in the office. There. So we we have. Um, we have a bit of a problem, I think, as, as others have, uh, have highlighted in, uh, in previous talks. I'll press the right button. There we are. Um, th there's, a, there's a bit of an issue with um, uh, distribution of, of power from, uh, from this part of the world. Uh, I think Adwina made reference to it in her, uh, in, in her comments earlier. So we're trying to get this balancing act between uh, between the supply and the supply and the demand and the crucial bit is how do you get it from from the supply to the uh, to, to the demand so we're uh, we, the and we're trying to make it work within the existing uh, within the existing architecture and we can talk all we like about trying to improve the the electricity grid but that costs money and and then we we start to get into uh, into the usual arguments about who's going to who's going to fund that so uh, base load generation supply is also uh, a bit uh, a bit creaky, and um, we've got the volatility of the of the supply because of this uh, the, the the creaking uh, the creaking infrastructure as well. So uh, the particular issue in Pembrokeshire, we've got a resort wealth of uh, energy resource, but um, what can we uh, what can we do with it if we can't get it to, if we can't get it out there? We need to move. The fact is that we need to move our energy into uh, into England from uh, from this part of the world. And if we can't do that, then uh, then we've got a problem. National Grid's well aware of the uh, the limitations of the HV network out of uh, out of this uh, out of this region. So here's the um, the sort of the network uh, that uh, that uh, perhaps National Grid would uh, would recognise into. Uh, into and it shows how we're how we're grouped into the uh, into the south of the south of Wales. So anything that's going to go out has got to go down that uh, down that channel some somehow. So current predictions of, uh, of grid capacity for exports exceed that that limit by uh, by 2025. At the moment, we've got uh, some spare capacity, but it's it's rapidly uh, being spoken for by. Uh, by other projects that are already in the uh, in the pipeline, uh, I don't think we're going to find a local market for any any capacity that's uh, that's installed. So uh, so it still leaves us with a bit of a uh, a bit of a problem. And Pembrokeshire is now a net exporter because of the uh, the onshore renewables that are uh, that are in there, partic particularly uh, uh, things like so things like solar. So whilst uh, local reinforcement is is necessary, it's certainly not the uh, not the whole answer. We can we can tinker with things, but uh, but is that is that going to solve thing, solve the overall problem? No, no, it certainly isn't. So that um, that inability to, uh, to to export produces a bit of a a bit of a challenge. Uh, we've got uh, new connections already under active load management. I mean, we have, we have a, a, a solar farm which is uh, regularly constrained. Simply because of uh, Western Power Distribution doing uh, replacements on its existing its existing infrastructure, which is uh, aging, uh, we, it's it's uh, costing us a huge amount in terms of in terms of income. That uh, if you, if that persists, if there's no guarantee of a sale, then uh, then the financial certainty of the uh, of, of of projects becomes a uh, becomes a bit of an issue. Um, if we can't supply at periods of peak uh, uh, or of peak demand, or alternatively uh, peak generating capacity, then we're uh, we're losing uh, we're losing revenue, and probably the thing that will uh, bring bring everybody together is it uh, it just it just persists the 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 issue about uh, renewables being uh, being a bit uh, a bit wobbly and uh, and uh, and not really very realistic is is then just uh, just just persists as a uh, as a result of that. Added to that, the uh, the political thinking at the moment uh, it simply doesn't uh, simply doesn't doesn't help us. So we've got three situations that we need to work hard to uh, to, to avoid. Uh, I won't dwell particularly on the, on the first one. I have lots of energy, but you don't want it unless you can actually find a market for it. You're not going to install the energy in the uh, in the, uh, the the capacity in the first place. 
Uh, the second one, uh, I don't have energy, but you really need it. It's the first bit that I think we need to be, uh, need to be a bit concerned about there. If we don't have the energy, then uh, it's probably because we haven't got any, any means of getting it out. And then the, the real issue is I have lots, but I can't get it to you. It's that supply. How do you get it from the source to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the user? So we need to look, we could just get a little bit depressed about this, but uh, we need to start thinking a little bit more about uh, how we can find ways around this. So we could have new direct firm connections, which might be locally or they might be, uh, they might be distant, but they, are, they obviously cost money. And if it's a local connection, you need the supply and the, and the user to be, uh, to be local. And I'm not sure that there are that many of those around here. So that would be a connection to, uh, to heavy, heavy users. Potentially, we can look at uh, look at storage, so batteries pumped to each electrical storage, hydrogen uh, hydrogen fuel cells. And certainly, I think that would uh, that's a solution in some some places. And then uh, electrical to chemical, which is what I particularly just wanted to uh, wanted to dwell on in a in a minute. So renewable energy projects. This could be power purchase agreement could be a win-win for generators and users. If you've got that look, that uh, that ability to connect uh, to connect locally, guaranteed markets without major reinforcement, yes, that's that's fine. So, and then we've got storage. Um, at the point of generation, if you can store it, store the store the uh, the energy you've generated, you can smooth your export curves. So so if you if you're generating at a high uh, a higher high rate, you can uh, you can store it and then export it when uh, when, when you're generating is when you're not generating at such high uh, such high levels. Uh, you can uh, store at the point of uh, at the point of distribution. Um, I suggest you speak to Tim about Tim James about this one. It's more his area of uh, areas of expertise. Uh, storage solutions. We've got batteries. We've got um, BHES, and we've got and we've got fuel cells as previously um, as previously uh, mentioned. Then we've got electrical to uh, to, to chemical. Um, Tim's note when he did the presentation was, "Can you guess what this is?" Um, the electrical to chemical is a bit of a, a bit of a clue, I suppose. So, uh, which energy connection has built in huge, huge store, huge capacity? Uh, it could deal with peaks and peaks and troughs. Which energy connection suffers minimal transmission losses? It's already there. Uh, has capacity for growth. The connection is the uh, the electrical the the uh, the, the uh, existing gas existing gas grid which runs from Pembrokeshire into the uh, into the rest of the UK. Uh, Tim has uh, done quite a lot of research on this, and we're now working with uh, with National Grid on um, on this. Basically, it's uh, it's an uh, electrolysis. You convert the uh, uh, convert the electricity into uh, into hydrogen. And you then mix it in very careful proportions into the um, in, in, with methane and inject it into the gas grid, increasing the calorific value of the gas, which increases its uh, its uh, uh, its value. So you get paid on the basis of the hydrogen that you uh, you very carefully inject into the into the gas grid, gas grid. It can flexibly and cheaply store excess excess energy. It's no no storage problems with it. It goes in the pipeline. It goes up the pipeline, and then it uh, goes into uh, inland uh, inland storage, and it delivers the uh, the gas to the point that it's uh, that it's used on uh, on demand. So advantages. We've got a major gateway into the UK already there for uh, for, for gas. The, uh, the technology still needs some some uh, some development, I think, but the technology is already there. It's just trying to get the uh, get the get the application right. It has huge capacity to to handle fluctuations in, uh, in in supply and demand. So I don't think we're dealing with a particularly challenging problem in terms of uh, getting the gas into the uh, the hydrogen into the uh, into the grid. Existing electricity grids, although they're still, they probably need a little bit of uh, a little bit of modification. They're already adequate to handle the uh, the transfer. There's some investment needed, and again, that's part of the work that we're uh, that Tim particularly is doing with uh, with National Grid at the uh, at the moment. And uh, the the hydrogen electrolysis capacity um, is is advancing at the moment. So this is a, it's effectively a, a 
it's known technology. It's it's GCSE A level sort of sort of sort of uh, sort of stuff, but the technology behind it is uh, is rapidly rapidly moving forward, and uh, I think we'll be uh, looking at uh, an industrial industrial scale application of this in the not too distant future. And of course, the local supply chain is already geared up for that uh, that type of chemical technology. So the skills are already in this uh, in this area to be able to, uh, to to lead in the in the development of that uh, of that sort of thing. So that's where we are. It's a work in progress. So the only conclusion that uh, that I can really uh, really bring to you is uh, it's a potential way forward to partially overcome existing and future constraints. And it's a uh, it's it's a work in progress, but it's a, it's something that we're investing our time and uh, time and effort into. We we uh, we genuinely believe that it's a um, it's a, a, a good way forwards to, to, to overcome the the uh, the constraints of uh, of supply out into the uh, into the rest of the UK. So happy to take any questions, but uh, please I'll probably refer to my uh, my first uh, my first comment about directing your questions to Tim James at a later stage. Thank you. Thanks,